guys, welcome back to Nurse Lisi's channel. I appreciate you guys continuing to tune in. Um, I've been so busy these past couple of months, job searching, starting my first nursing job as an ER nurse. Um, so I've just been really busy and I have not had any time to come on here and do a video, which I'm so sad about because a lot of people have been reaching out to me asking me um, to continue um, this process of sharing um, some motivation and inspiration in the nursing field. So today we're going to chat about five ways to be successful in finding your first nursing job. So let's get right into it. We all know it. that the new grad struggle is not only overcoming the NCLEX, but also searching for your first nursing job, which can be really challenging, especially being so novice and not knowing um, much of the clinical aspect of things. So um, it can be really challenging, very stressful, intimidating. Um, for me, I feel like it was all of that. It was very stressful. Um, it was very challenging. I felt um, very scared in the process. And so um, I want to share my journey with you, and hopefully this can help you to um, get your first nursing job as soon as possible. Because for me, two months of being a licensed nurse without a job was stressing me out. I know people have been a nurse maybe eight months, six months, and still don't have a job. And that's fine. That's OK. But I'm a very impatient person. And so because I'm impatient, I need to make sure the ball is rolling all day, every day, and just be on top of things. That's just how I First topic that we're going to discuss is a nursing portfolio and the reason why I'm emphasizing this is because it's important it makes you look good okay so you should have a nursing portfolio yes a resume is cool and a cover letter is okay but if you are going looking for your first nursing job you are a new graduate nurse and you are basically competing with other nurses that may even have experience, you want to make sure you come with your A game, right? So you want to make sure that you have a nursing portfolio. This is something that you're going to provide to either the nurse manager or the director that's interviewing you. You are going to give it to them. You are going to allow them to keep this. And this is to represent you, you know? So I have a nursing portfolio here that I designed myself and I bought these little plastic um, folders I guess and I basically just put together a nursing portfolio so here I have um, my name and a little bit about me and then the second page I have a resume as you can see I have a resume of all the things that I've done and then, following that, I have my nursing license copied and put in here. Following that, I have my BLS, okay? I have that BLS in there. I was supposed to take the ACLS and PALS course before I started my interviewing process. However, I became super lazy and I didn't take it, but however, I am an emergency room nurse, so I do need to take it within the year, okay? So I will be getting those certificates, but at the moment, I didn't have it, so I just posted that in there. But once I get it, I'll just put it under here. Not that I need this anymore, but a good way to do this is making your copy of your certificates and putting them in here. So your PALS, your ACLS, your BCLS or BLS, and your TNCC or CEN, in my case, those are the two that I'll be taking. And then following that, I have some recommendation letters, okay? Recommendation letters are important. So I have two in my portfolio. I have one from a clinical um, instructor from my school, and then I have one that was a nursing educator where I used to work. I used to work in a hospital as an emergency room technician. And my nurse educator, she, uh, you know, she recommended me and she typed it up for me, so she gave it to me. Following that, you want to put your unofficial transcript. 
so they know the type of student you are. If you're showing that, you know, you have a good GPA, you're showing that you're a responsible student, you make sure that you're on your academics, and you make sure you do it in the best way you can. So I think it's important that you put that in there. And so this is my degree. I have a degree here of my nursing degree. Following that, I have my second degree, which is a bachelor's degree in psychology. And then following that, I just have things that make me look good. So here I have my Sigma Theta Tau International Honor Society of Nursing certificate. I put that in there because only special people get in. No, I'm joking. Uh, you just have to have a good GPA. And then I put here, I got third place for my PICO project. My, and then lastly, where I used to work, which was Mount Sinai, I um, was given a certificate of being a star um, and just providing that great patient care. So I put that all in here, and all in all, I give this to the person that's interviewing me. It is theirs to keep. I will not be taking it back. So that is definitely something you need to invest in. Take your time and put it together and make sure that it's going to represent you and you're going to go in there and feel a little bit more confident. What we're going to chat about is LinkedIn. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Excuse me, I needed a drink. LinkedIn. LinkedIn is going to be your best friend. LinkedIn is that app that has a six on it. LinkedIn is going to be your best friend. Please, if you do not have a LinkedIn, invest in making a LinkedIn. It is important, especially being a new graduate nurse. Make sure you have a professional picture on your profile, because again, this is representing you. Um, and basically, it's just literally a profile, professional profile, of you, what you do, what associations you were part of, what school you went to, what um, jobs you've had, what uh, certificates or license you currently um, hold. LinkedIn is going to be your best friend. I still use my LinkedIn to sneeze my butt off and my nose is like completely red right now. Oh, my nose is on another level. Always and forever it will be. Anyway, getting back to LinkedIn. Um, when I made my LinkedIn, I had one previously, but I never utilized it. Um, after I finished nursing school, it was evident that I needed to use it. Um, this is the way that I was going to make connections with um, people that matter, like human resources, talent acquisition, um, nursing managers, directors, so on and so forth. And I must say that most of um, the interviews that I had or Actually, I've only had three interviews, but after I got my job, I started to get a lot of interviews, and most of them were coming from LinkedIn. Um, I would say when you make your LinkedIn account, type in the search engine, nurse manager, or talent acquisition nursing, or um, type nursing director, or type nurse, whatever, just type and follow, 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 follow. Make sure you put the hospitals that you want to um, apply to. Like, let's say, for instance, you're in New York City, such as myself, and you want to apply to NYU Langone. So you would type in the search engine NYU Langone, and many people from that institution will pop up, and their title would be right under it. So it will be like, Works at NYU Langone, nurse manager, or nursing director, or talent acquisitions, or whatever. It will tell you what they do. Follow, follow, follow. Okay, when you follow, these people put important information up, such as, um, I'm looking for a labor and delivery nurse, um, per DM, part-time. Um, are you interested in emergency room? If you are, email me, message me. Um, interview day coming up for this facility, um, this date, this time, um, if you're interested, mail, um, so many different resources that you will see on LinkedIn. It will only make your process easier, but I must say 
just because you follow, just because you read, it's not good enough. Which brings me to my third resource for you to follow when trying to get your first nursing job as a new graduate nurse. Because as we know, new graduate nurses are risky and they cost a lot of money. So we have to make sure that we are you know, putting our foot forward because there is a lot of competition when it comes to nursing and there are a lot of experienced nurses. Again, that brings me to my third resource that we're going to get. Third resource, I thought this would be cool for you guys to read. Follow your dreams. They know the way. Isn't that awesome? It's so true. And so the third resource is be consistent and be aggressive. Please be aggressive, okay? Like I said, I am the type of person that is very impatient, okay? I was licensed as a nurse for two months. I got my license in March, March 12th, and I, no, that's when I took my NCLEX, you know, two days after, what is that, 13, 14. March 14th, I found out I was licensed, and I got my job June 10th. That was my start date, okay? So all in all, March, April, May, it was just becoming too much. I was like, okay, it's about to be two months. The two months mark is over. Like, no, you know, like I was really, really on top of it. You need to be consistent. You need to make sure that you're applying to the facility you want to work at every single day. I was on the computer every single day after me getting my license applying. I didn't care what position it was that I was applying for, I was applying. I would go to all the facilities that I want to work at and potentially see myself as an employee and I would apply to their positions every day. The only positions that I did not apply for was anything related to labor and delivery or anything related to pediatrics. I am just not interested. Um, I did enjoy my peds and maternity rotation. However, my interest is in geriatrics. I love my old people. I love adults. I, um, I find it to be very saddening to see kids or babies sick. Um, labor is beautiful, but it's just too personal for me, and I can't see myself doing that every day. Um, you like what you like, and that's just that's okay, you know? But those were the only two things that I didn't apply to. I applied to everything else. I applied to med search. I applied to ICU. I applied to ER. I applied to OR. Um, not that I really wanted OR, but I still applied, you know, and I applied every single day. I made it, um, I, I was very consistent. I made sure that I was utilizing my time in a productive manner and setting my foot forward because no one's going to do it for me. So be consistent. aggressive. I don't mean go crazy and be like, hey, I deserve this job. Like, you know, I just graduated with a 3.7 GPA. Like, how could you not give me this job? You, no, I'm not talking about that aggressive. I'm talking about when you're on LinkedIn and you see these nurse managers or these directors and you see these posts, make sure that you are emailing them. Make sure you're following up with them. If you find, let's say I found the... What was she? She was the recruiter for the ICU residency program. And I found her email. Someone gave it to me and I hit her up. I called her. I emailed her. I was even going to mail her my um, portfolio, but I didn't. But the point is, what you need to do is you need to be aggressive. You need to email these people. Introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Alicia and I am a new graduate nurse and I'm very interested in the critical care area of nursing and I am wondering do you have anything open are you looking for anything I see that you uh, put a post up about you're interested in ER nurses I'm very interested in this field I would love to meet with you is there any way that we can chat about ways or advice you can provide for me on um, being a new graduate nurse interested in the critical care um, aspect of nursing because guess what being in critical care is not easy it's hard to get an ICU job right out of school it's hard to get an ER job right out of school we all know that but again you have to be passionate you have to be aggressive and you have to be consistent you have to keep hitting these people up because they're not gonna look for you you have to look for them 
So you have to consistently be aggressive and make sure that you make yourself known. And another thing to aggression, you need to make sure you're putting yourself out there and you need to be a part of an association, whether that be the Nursing Honor Society, Sigma, or let's say me. I'm a part of the Association of Hispanic Nurses, okay? And when I go to these associations, guess what? There are resources. There are people there from talent acquisitions. There are people there that are looking for employ, you know, potential employees. Like, you have to be aggressive. Become part of an association you're interested in, critical care, emergency. Um, if you're African American, they have the Association of, His of Black Nurses. Hispanic nurses, Asian nurses, Pacific Islander nurses, they have all type of associations. You have to be aggressive. You have to make sure you put yourself out there. You have to socialize. You have to network. No one likes it. It is what it is. But guess what? At the end of the day, if you want a job, you need to work. On to my fourth resource, making connections in either the hospital you currently work at or the university that you are attending. In my case, I was working at a hospital and I made tremendous amount of connections with nurse managers. Again, I made it my duty to introduce myself to them, provide them with my portfolio and tell them that I'm interested in critical care. I did this to two ICU nurses and um, I was provided the opportunity to interview uh, one on the telemetry unit and one on the MICU. However, I already had taken an offer with the emergency room where I was happy to be. And so my point is that you need to take the time to get to know people in the university that you're currently attending because guess what? You're in nursing school. So who's teaching you? Nurses. Nurses know nurses. So you have to again become part of associations get connected to your professional um, instructors and hopefully they can help you and guide you um, and make the process easier for you once you become a new graduate nurse with a license um, if you're working at the hospital even better you're getting experience with patient care and your learning skills and so again making it known that you're in nursing school making it known that you want to be a nurse here and making it known that you want to connect with them to get the opportunity okay so that is the fourth resource and let's go on to five the fifth resource the last resource for you to utilize for you to get your first nursing job is practice interview questions with a friend with a friend a boyfriend your family it doesn't matter you need to practice these questions because I will guarantee you that if you have like let's say a pre-made up sentence for like so why did you choose our university it's gonna help you a lot for me they asked me so why this place why that place and I literally had a pre-made sentence perfect for why I want to work there so practice your questions make sure that you um, say it in a professional manner and in a professional tone um, and it will help you to feel a little less stressed and anxious because either way you're going to feel 100% anxious, 100% nervous and 100% stressed out because at the end of the day their decision relies on your future. So you're going to be stressed but anyway long story short practice with your friends and use Google. Use Google to put in med surge interview questions or the facility, let's say NYU Langone um, interview questions. And Glassdoor will come up with different questions. But please, please, if you are going into a specific field, make sure that you educate yourself in that field. So. For me, I was lucky enough to get this position, however, I walked into the interview like 0% uh, zero, zero prepared, zero, okay? I literally went off my memory and that was it, okay? I was walking into an emergency department interview. 
not realizing that 90% of my interview was going to be clinical. My interview was 90% clinical and about 10% like basic questions, okay? And so you have to know what you're walking into. Um, for ER or ICU, get ready for those clinical questions like what is AFib, how does AFib look, what do you use to treat AFib, how do you tell a patient how to use a nebulizer, um, what's the flow meter, what are early signs of diabetes, what are late signs of diabetes, um, just everything. Remember everything, swear, because you're going to need it for those um, critical care areas specific like ICU or ER. Um, but yeah, definitely practice your questions. Um, it will make you feel a little bit more confident when they're asking you these questions. And if you if they ask you a question and you don't know the answer right away because it's a little bit of either a confusing or it was just like, whoa, I didn't expect that. Say, um, can I come back to that question? Because um, at the moment I don't have an answer, but I would like to come back to the question because um, it's a tough one. And so, you know, be honest, be open, and let them know, like, may I come back to this question? It was a really tough question. And, you know, put your personality into it. Don't walk in there with a robot because guess what? They're going to know that you're fake and nobody wants anybody fake around them. So be honest, be open, and be yourself. I think that's, like, important also. But definitely practice those interview questions. I want to chat about my experience um, when it comes to looking for a new nursing position because everyone knows that it's just such an obstacle, especially being a new grad, because you're pretty much nobody. Like, let's just face it. Like, And what pissed me off the most was in nursing school, they tell you, oh, my God, nursing is so in demand. Um, once you finish nursing school, you're going to get a job right away. And everyone needs nurses. And no matter where you go, you're going to be employed. And boy, oh, boy, how... <laughs> I really took that by heart, and I was like, oh, okay. So then when I become a nurse, like, I should be getting phone calls left and right, left and right, left and right. Oh, hell no, honey, it's not like that. So well, I had a total of three interviews. My first interview was a psych interview, and that hospital was, like, a Brooklyn hospital, a community in Brooklyn, and I did it for the experience. I wanted to experience how nursing interview interviewing would be. And so I went there not really wanting the job, but just wanting the experience. And that's fine. If you want to do that, you can do that. Because at the end of the day, you have to put yourself in certain situations. This way, you get better at dealing with them. And so I, you know, I went to that interview and I had an amazing experience. I felt it felt very natural to me but again I think it felt very natural to me because I didn't care if I got the position or if I didn't get the position um, anyway long story short um, it was an inpatient psych um, position and it was Monday through Friday eight hours and that was something that totally did not interest me because I am so freaking okay with the three days 12 hours I love that and I think that's one reason why nursing is amazing because it's so flexible um so that Monday through Friday eight hours wasn't something I was interested in but anyway again I used it for an experience long story short I got the position and I rejected the offer 